Hey everybody, welcome again to another episode of AdsCast. Um, I'm delighted to be um, joined today by Gareth Price, who's the manager of Sandhurst Town, who are a non-league football team here in the UK. Um, we've had a, a massive influx of people all around the world watching and downloading the podcast. So thank you very much. So please remember to continue to subscribe. Um, and one of the one of the nuances in our country is the the non-league system, which anyone here knows what it's about, but anyone around the world, it's a bit of a, uh, a unique thing. Uh, we have obviously Premier League, everyone knows what the Premier League is, and then we've got Championship, League One, League Two. Uh, that's pretty well established, but then we have the whole non-league pyramid. And unless you live and breathe football in this country, that can be a bit of a, a foreign object. So Gareth is a manager of Sandhurst who participate in the National League. Uh, fortunately, we've nabbed, nab- nabbed him on a day off. So thanks for giving up your time, Gareth. Um, for anyone who's not sure about the non-league, just sort of explain what it is, where it sits, similarities and differences compared to, say, Premier League and below. Okay, so at our level, so the period you have um, what used to be the conference, is about an hour now, uh, uh, National League, and you have... Uh, North and South, which is the two divisions below, which are the same, on the same level, but South. Then you have, um, well, what we do is set three. So that would be one, set two, and then set three. Um, then you have set four, which is um, pretty much, you have, well, they're all part-time, to be honest. Then I think most teams in the Panorama National League now are, are full time. There's a few that are part time, and the two divisions below that part time. I'm um, a couple of few here and there are full time. Then underneath that, three and four is pretty much part time. Then you have step five, which is where, where I'm actually uh, managing the standards at step six, seven, eight, ten, and down to eleven after that as well. So at the very top, everyone will know like the top tier is the Premier League. So that that's right at the very top of the pyramid. That's where the majority yeah. of the money, the TV, step one, top 20 teams in the country, they go there. Then you have step two, which is used to be called Division One, but now it's the Championship. Yeah. Step three, we've got League One. And then step four, we've got League Two. And that is our pro 92 clubs. That's your pro league. And then you've got the conference with the Van yeah. Arma, which is the league. league. Yeah, and, that's national, league, yeah. and that's national. So that's everyone in England and Wales of yeah. um, either a certain standing or through the promotion relegation. You've got another division there, which is step yeah. five, but also step one of the non-league. So it's kind of like yes. that, that two. That's that it. Two that's right. to it. So, so, yeah, they're, they're, trying, they're trying to make that, what you say, step, step five from, from pro league to uh, step one and non-league. They're trying, they're trying to make that league. league. Uh, well, basically, League Three. We did talk about trying to get because so much of it now, especially whereas before, uh, when we were younger and all of that, reverse it and thinking of teams like Wokey, all, all shot, um, they were all part time. Mm. So now a lot of the teams are, are, are full time, so they're trying to now, and obviously that would affect the, 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 the filter of money down. Boost the money for the, for the, the teams in those leagues. Because what, what you had is you had the Football League, didn't you? And obviously Premier League came along later. And then there was that divide between professional amateur or professional and semi-pro. So you had like the yeah. National League. And then you had your ground had to be of a certain type. Obviously you had yeah. to get promoted, financially stable, so on and so forth. And then you made that jump. But you had a lot of yo-yo going on, didn't you? So you might be uh, like a Woking or Farnborough or Telford United or someone like that, you'd be yeah. in the national, you'd go to League Two, pro, really, really difficult. Your best players would get cherry picked and you drop back down. But but now that gap seems to have narrowed. So you've got like some stables of the football league, like uh Barnet, Notts County. Um yeah, yeah. I think they're the oldest professional football club, aren't they? Notts County. They're in the National League now. So like that gap has really no. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 
a massive part of that for sure. And, and like you say, in the, dipping in to the league, and remember from the National League, you only have one or two promoted. Whereas, you know, obviously all the other league, pro leagues, it's three or four. And it's so, you know, League 2 and League 1 is four, and it's two, uh, um, so three automatic. And, and one it's playoff, playoff, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. that league. With the, with the, the non league, the national league, you only do so only one uh, because uh, that's the situation where you are in the gap of the league. Now it's, it's so much smaller. Because, oh, again, yeah. say last 30 years since the Premier League, you had that that sort of down flux of money, obviously, which, which came, came in with Premier League and TV deals, deals and all the rest of it. And I remember. The top, the top four in the Premier League, League, you've got the, the, the richest, richest game in football, football, you know, you know who, who gets, gets into the Champions League. League. But, but you also, also have that massive trepidation game in League, League Two. Last, last, last day of the season, season you'd have, have like one, one point, point and, and it would be, be I don't, I don't know, Carl United, United or someone, someone fighting to stay in the League, League because, because the drop down to the National was such a massive drop in quality, quality but also in money as well, wasn't it? But, I mean, a few years ago, I remember, I want to say it was Crawley Town. They, they had, had a backer, backer and, and they, they came, came up through the leagues. leagues. They, they got, got into League Two, held, held their, their own. So it, so it seems, seems like the money now is starting to filter down, down a little bit into, into that, that fifth tier. And it, it sort of seems to have brought some, some of those teams up. up. Would that, that be fair? fair? Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, and it's been for the last few, quite a few years. Uh, really, between the National League and League Two, there's not that much difference. You'll, you'll see a lot of National League teams when they get promoted in you know, League 2, they, do, they end up doing pretty well. Um, and there's been that, and obviously I've had that value. But the, but the problem before, when it was only one team promoted, was uh, it was almost like, let me like say, that final day in League 2, promoted to the, the non international league, was a doom day because it almost, you end up in the National League for God knows how long. Because it, it must be so difficult if you've only got one, one spot to get out of it. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what to whether they did with the show. I know it's, it's two now. It's, it's automatic. The winner of the league goes up, and then they one of four in a sort of playoff. That very like the rest of the league aligned. Not from A, but um, I think it would help moving down the moving the, the, the systems. And we'll we'll say, why not? No, no, no I, I, I agree. agree. Have, Have you found, found like? like with the, the Premier, Premier League, we've, we've seen, seen an influx, influx of foreign players, players foreign, foreign managers. You know, you know so it's in, in our lifetimes we've seen, seen that change. change. Have, Have you seen, seen that feel down, down to sort of your level, level as well? well that, that you'll, you'll see a multicultural, multicultural representation instead of just um, the traditional, traditional hungover Brit, Brit on a Saturday, Saturday morning? morning. Um, <laughs> but, uh, we've got a couple of foreign lads with us at the moment. I wouldn't say... But the noticeable difference, not in not like in the pros and the beginning, but the lads coming in. Um, again, down at our level, looking at our level, it probably goes on in and around um, National League, League, um, and out, and um, set two, uh, set two, and set three. It really happens a lot more, but much down where I am, uh, set. Do you, do you see, see like, like a change in, in I hate, hate using this word, but, but do you see a change, like change in philosophy? Like, like we've, we've seen, seen it with, like, like Guardiola, Guardiola comes in, in everyone, everyone has to play out from the back, back now. now. You, you can't, can't just put it to Rose and reorganise. reorganise. Has, has that, that kind of thing sort of started? started to, have, you have you seen, seen the way the teams, even as you go down the pyramid, are trying to change? Or is that absolutely? You have. No, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, and you get the whole coaches that have. Uh, coaches and also, so, uh, you, you have, have to say, you have to, uh, he's coming out, uh, back, and blah, 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 blah. Um, and it also, because of the, the more, I suppose one of the bigger changes as well is, is there's more youth players now playing down at the league level sets, five, six. The, the players are young when I played around those levels, they're all, they're all old players. It was mm. all 25, 30 plus, you know, Ash. All about winning battle, battle and on pitches that were absolutely all not that they were that much better now, but, but they were absolutely sure and, and it was you know bad tackle, all that kind of stuff. Um, whereas now, more 3D pitches, more access to those kinds of things, you can play a better 
on the football. Um, and, and if, if you want, want to, if the coach is down, down is there a way to if you want to coach that, then, then I'm not saying this. this my idea is to have three teams that really play some fantastic, fantastic football. football. Yeah. Brilliant. And you look at it, that's, that, that, that's great. But they're playing on 3D pitches and playing on really, pitches and on really <laughs> muddy pitches. It can then, that's when it's, you know, you need to be able to mix it up and change it. Because, ways, and styles. Cause it's, it's funny, funny because, because again, again, one, one of, of the unique, unique things along with, with the non-league system, system that we've, we've got is the, the FA Cup. Cup. And, and so, so that's open, open to anyone. anyone. So you, so you go, go through all the preliminary rounds, rounds and you get, get to like the lower, lower rounds, rounds proper. proper. And you, and you see, see some, some of the bigger teams who are used to playing on you know, carpets, perfect, perfect pitches. pitches. And they, they come, come down. down. We, had we had it recently where, where um, I want to say it was Ipswich. They played Bracknell Town. At your ground, wasn't it? Because you have the ground share. And okay, look, it's it's really nice. I remember sort of late 90s, early noughties playing against a couple of what we would call like tier six teams. And mm. the pitches there, look, they were better than what I was used to, but they, they weren't pristine. And you could see Ipswich struggled with the pitch. Like it wasn't up to a, a League One championship standard. The ball didn't move as, as true. It was slower, a bit more of a physical battle, which is what I remember when I grew up. But having seen uh, clips from, you know, they circulate from all the, the local leagues, there seems to be more technical play going on. There seems to be more tactical battles, difference of formations. It's not rigid 4 4 2 anymore. You know, you've got wing backs bombing forward. It's not just balls in the box and a big lump. There seems to have been a, a change at that level. Yeah, this, uh, I mean, the coaching has it's always got better. The, the, coach, the FA and badges, and there's, there's more people. Whereas in the day, and I played for, I was, you know, step by step. It, it, you didn't have any quality, uh, co- uh, coaching qualifications. You know, now you're getting all of these guys that are coming through the systems with their, you know, a level two, level three, A for B, for A, and, and, and they're at, down at those levels. That's five, four, three. And, you know, it makes so much difference because uh, uh, teams, coaches didn't want to play better football. These young lads, they want to play better football. You can see it in them. They want this. It. Just it's having that coach to coach them into playing it. It's when it crosses over into that win at all costs, <clears throat> and the coach at the time and under pressure. Oh, well, I miss about it. Just get rid of it, and then there's your difference. That's that's important. Because in the non, if we take that that pyramid structure, so we've got level five, which we also said was like tier one. That's national. <laughs> Then, as you said, you get to the next step, and there's a north-south divide. So you like you draw a line through like Birmingham. You've got teams above yeah, which are in the north. So, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm doing it airy fairy. Yeah. So you've yeah. got your northern half, you've got your southern half, and then you have, if I remember correctly, it used to be called combined counties. Is it still called combined counties now? Yes, that's just five. And and that's where the regions get split even more. So you've got like London or mm. South East or South West or East Midlands or whatever. And you have all the little teams from the towns and villages there yep. with their Premier Division or Division One. or And yep. you have, oh God, this is going back now. You had like Doc Martins. You've got, you had Ismian, Hellenic League. Ismian is still there. Ismian yeah. is still there. Yeah. Yeah. I think the Hellenics might even be there. Right? Ryman Premier League from back in the day. Yeah, that would be your step three now, I think. Step four. I think that's what it used to be. Something like that, yeah. And that's where you start to see, as you were saying before, the, the pro team definitely becomes semi-pro at that level. So you start to see the marked difference between the grounds and the fitness and how often you train yeah. and that kind of stuff. Is that? Is I, would, that I would say, yeah, at step three, step two and step three, they're... There's a noticeable difference, and then step five and six. There's not that much difference. The, the clubs are very much the same. The, the, the facilities are very much the same. Um, the coaching is pretty, pretty much the same. And, and, and then, then you have step four, which is again that's another step. The step was five and six and four, and then again three is the same. So the areas that you're covering, are, you go in, you know, midweek. You, Three four hour drives for for uh, for your games and things like that away games. So there is a big difference, and it is the cost of the clubs. So that that's where you start seeing the noticeable difference because if you've got a team from say 
like the Bournemouth area, going over to play Dover, which is two or 300 mile round trip. That's yeah. a bigger investment than if you're in your regional area. Yeah. So that's where the standard goes up, the investment goes up. But do you, get, do you get the money back though from like the gates and the tickets and everything? Or is it still noticeable like a cap? Uh, yeah, I, I say I'm, I don't have too much experience in, into the finances exactly of, of how that works, but I would say that it probably doesn't. It's you know rely on heavily on sponsorship things like that, um, and support, support from around the around the club, local businessmen, things like that, want to invest and get involved that, that kind of thing. That's so always I'm, been the thing about the non-league. It's like it's been that thing for love rather than for money, hasn't it? You do it because you love the game community all that local element you've got like your local butchers or glazer or whatever sponsor the club and like it's like a, a passion of love isn't it really at that level absolutely yeah for sure i mean you get the occasion let's say owner that comes in that's you know i have uh actual background wants to i don't know take a step by side and build them up and get them into the national league it, it, it happens there's there's a there's a few dotted around that are, that are like that that have financial behind them and and uh, you notice the difference in in how they can progress and obviously the pay the players and things like that. How do you balance like because everything you do is still the same as if you were doing it at any level? You still got to train. You still got to be focused. Like especially for you, you've got to prep the opposition. You've got to do tactics meetings you've got to make sure everyone's fit not carrying injuries um prepped before you go into the game how do you balance that with an everyday job it's difficult <laughs> because uh for instance in my own obviously everyone's different in their, their roles and things that they they do but my own personal experience i, I work in a mental health um friends forensic mental health um hospital so I don't have access to my phone during the day. So between nine and five, I don't get my phone. I, oh. So, I, you know, in the morning, do as much as I can, whatever messaging I need to do. In the, in the evening, I'm just waiting for the barrage of whatever's happening, whatever's going on, who can't play or if it's a game or, you know, it's getting caught or, you know, all of the messages like that. Um, so it, 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 is re- it is really difficult. It is like a second job. No, there's no two ways about it. But let's say we love... We love it as coaches. Here, we're, you know, you coach, you, you love it, so you, that's why you do it. It's just uh, very addictive. <laughs> it reminds, <laughs> we enjoy it. It reminds me of my Sunday mornings. You know, when you would you wake up and you'd be like, "Oh crap, games in twenty minutes," and you wait for the text for, "Oh, who hasn't got their money? Who's dropped out? Who's hung yeah. over? Who's?" And you just see the the list of people just get. Oh, we've only got two subs this week. You know, it reminds me of. Uh, <laughs> of yeah. Those well, I say this, you know. Youngsters, young lads working, it might be in college, so you know, 21, 22, they're working, they're working, they, you know, at our level, even with the travel, you know, we could be going to, from, from Bracknell to the other side of London, you know, and, get, and being able to do that and get there for 6 30 to the grounds just to, to, to prepare, and you know, and to, people don't finish finally tracking it. It is difficult, it, it, you know, the, 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 the issues. From my level all the way up to the, the National League at, at the same I mean, we train twice a week. We used to train twice a week. We try and, and, and most teams in our level and step five, they train twice a week. And that goes pretty much the same up until the, the teams that are more um, professional. Um, so that most of them all only train twice a week. And then uh, maybe a in or an analysis session, something like that. Um, so it's very similar through those sort of periods up until the National League, which is quite, you'd think it's quite surprising, but it is basically, again, if you're part-time, when can you fit all of this in? That was, that was going to be one of my questions, was when you consider you've got your league, which typically will be either 18 or 20 teams, you've got the opportunity to play in the FA Cup, usually the, the qualifying rounds, you've got things like FA Trophy, and FA Vars, which they sort of run at those lower levels. That's quite a lot of competitions, excluding any local um, competitions like in the Reading or Greater Berkshire areas. That's a lot of games to cram into a normal a normal season. So 
Are you averaging two games a week across the season? Well, with the cancellations at the moment, we are going to be Tuesday, Saturday, which makes it difficult to also train as well um, with recoveries, but depending on when your training days are. Well, so if your club's lucky enough to have access to your own training facility, like that, it's not so much of an issue, but not only not a lot of clubs have that. So then you basically Tuesday, Saturday play and you and you, you, you lose the training set. So you almost have to use that pre-season up until the bad weather or all your, all your training sessions in because you know the other side of Christmas, January, it's going to be all the way, all the way. And when the weather gets better, we have another one in there. Because that's the other thing, because the calendar runs almost exactly the same whether you're a professional or non-league. You start sort of end of July, beginning of August, and you'll run through till sort of May, June. Uh, all of the issues you have are the same as the big boys have got. You've got all your logistical operation to get to the game, get it on, do the game, get back. You've got all your physical elements. You've got to train, don't get injured, warm downs. You've got all your tactical elements, how you're going to line up, what system to play. Um, you've got to do the debrief prep. Like you just said, because at your level, if we have a downpour, how do you drain the water, waterlogged pitch, or if it's frozen? Like we're having at the moment, games being called off. So you're having all of them games crammed into such a small space. That's a lot of issues to have to balance, plus earn some money as well. Yeah, well, exactly. It's, it is it is it takes up a lot of time. A lot of time. I mean... Sundays usually get a bit of a time off, but yesterday I was full all day, just messages, players, um, uh, are we going to be playing on Tuesday? We've got a game Tuesday. Are we going to be playing with the weather? Prepare, choose, choose the squad. We've got, today we were talking about the cup games, the with the local uh, cup games. There's about five or six cups. You end up being there. I mean, it's you, you, you use it and you use your, your sport players and you use your academy players and things like that to, to, to go through the, probably the ones that you're not too bothered about. But again, it, it's a lot, it is a lot of games, a lot of games for a non-league, especially when facilities aren't there to, to facilitate us being able to actually play all these games. That's the other thing you just touched on is, <clears throat> again, a lot of people perhaps don't recognise, but you've got academies, you've got under 23s, under 18s, the feeder youth teams into the seniors, just like in the pros, that requires a much bigger area than people potentially think. It's not just a football pitch with a couple of goals. You've got to have different pitches, the facilities. You can't have younger children training with grown men, for example. You've got to separate them. That's a lot of people, senior squad, reserves, youth, that you need to potentially... Yeah. It's a massive operation. Yeah. People don't consider that. No, yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, so this is the gist of being able to, you know, you have under 15, 16s, and, and then downwards, and you know, where are they? All them guys can train. You know, what days do they train? I mean, they might be, might be able to get them in. I would hope then you would have find a coach who can do that around his working life. You know, it is a massive, is a massive um, time investment, massive uh, program of. Trying to, trying to get everything in. I mean, it's, it can be, what do I say? It's a, it's a second job. And they, uh, uh, it's non league level. We don't get paid for it, but we do it because we love it. Huh? We, you know, and these kids, we want to help these kids and help improve these kids where we can. Okay, cool. So I've got, I've just paused it there. So with the difficulty of finding coaches who can coach um, youth players and fit it around, um, you know, their everyday working lives. How do you go about finding youth players or senior players in the first instance? Do you have a scout network? Is it a case of anyone who comes through the door? How do you, like, replenish all your various teams? Um, so, from our, my own experience in our, in our team, we use a lot of um, Bracknell Academy players, which are obviously uh, part of their um, uh, education campus, um, and they train and train in the day and they, they do their education with with um with Bracknell. Um well we do have some overseas players on scholarships as well actually that come in and um and, and football. Um 
So we use a lot of those guys um, for us in particular. Um, I wouldn't say it was the same necessarily for other teams it's, uh, around our level, step five, step six. Um, they would probably would have had players that they would have had there at the club that are fairly local. We normally get sort of fairly local players from around the areas, well, on academy players. Um, and then, um, yeah, I mean, it, it just it just goes from there. I mean, it's pretty much at, around our area, at our level, I should say, it's more local players. Um, that have, you'll find that they tend to do a bit of the circuit around those sort of teams in around step five, step six, and move around depending on <clears throat> what coaches move in where or who, who what. Certain club. Do you have a, like a quota as to how big your first team can be? Um, well, it, I know other clubs will do because ours is run slightly different because we use uh, a lot of the academy players from, um, from Redmond's Academy at, at, at Andhurst. So it's slightly different to uh, how other, other clubs would, would, would run theirs. But they, they all have the same system. They'll have a first team, reserve team, then the academy under 18s, and then the, 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 the teams below that. So, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll have those players that are coming up. But, and most most managers end up having a bit of experience in and around these clubs, and they they tend to take players with them in and around the clubs. Good, they move so yeah. And if you had a player who just happened to be on fire in a given year, what's the likelihood of somebody from the national or someone going, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll have a piece of that, and then taking them off your hands? Does that happen? Do they get poached? Oh, a lot. We've had we've had eight players been taken from higher clubs but wow we we've done really well we've we started the we started the league um and we've we've been on fire we've been brilliant um we've had some great results nil um even at our level which, which is really unusual um to happen but we you know um fantastic from the start of the season so the first eight games then we lost sort of eight players up and up and left went on moved on to fire higher team to like you say just come in and take them on we've because like I say again being unique in our um, our setup our, uh, uh, using uh, uh, the Bracken Academy players they all tied into their education and, and that's part of their um, the education part of their, their training and being part of the club so them to move even though we've had would you believe offers for and, and trying to take those players had to, had to obviously deal with and um, but then also on the flip side of that like you say we've had one lad uh, go on a, a, um, a trial at Colchester we've had another one go on a trial at, at Sunderland um, at QPR um, and then again it's those <clears throat> around the step five, four, three and then come in and trying to take as as well it's like DJ Catmull from all those years ago where he was non-league and then from nowhere just went to like Brentford or somewhere yeah. and Oh, look at Jamie Vardy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He was at what? You know, Fleetwood, Halifax. Very similar. Yeah, yeah, down, down there, down. You know, non leagues probably four, five, three, maybe something like that, and then and then up conference, and then up to Premier League from there. I think. So you you said earlier that you don't get paid like per se um, for what you do. So do the players have any kind of contract at all, or is it a case that somebody can come in and swoop them overnight? So at, at step five and six, what 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 you have, I would say, yeah, probably even step four as well. What you have is this this seven day approach. So you have to for between the secretary of the club and the and the player that and the club want to deal with and the, the player you want to deal with, you, you send in a, a seven day approach. Um, that again goes to the club. You get seven days. Um, some clubs waive them and they allow you to talk to the player and and if they want to. The sign for you or, or whatnot but you want to arrange with that player or and then some some teams will obviously not like their post and they will make you wait for the whole seven days and then after that then you can a- approach a player and then speak and then say your piece and if the player's not interested he's like that, and that's it but that's how it works in in those levels but when you get to step i suppose four three four two up to those areas the, the, the players are on contracts a lot of them are on contracts um, and that's where you have to have club to club negotiations. You've got up. Yes, that's, that's where things like a transfer fee and stuff would would start to kick yeah. in. Yeah, that, that starts to come in. Yeah, it, it doesn't happen down at 
five to. So, uh, do you get any form of reimbursement then? So, if you had a young player that you found, let's say he's an electrician or he's whatever he is, and he sixteen knocks on the door, can I have a trial? You know, knock your socks off. Um, first teamer for three four years, um, and then I don't know. I was going to say Slough Town, but maybe they're a bit too small fry. Let's say like Oxford United or someone or Swindon Town come along. Yeah, yeah we'll have them. You've obviously invested a lot of time and, of course, money because you've had to obviously kit and all the rest of it. Does the club get any kind of like compensation for that player moving on? It's, it's really interesting. That it's a, it's a great point that you bring up. It's, I listen to talk sport a lot, and uh, you hear Simon Jordan on there talking about how he, uh, <laughs> Alice, he used to always talk about his one was uh, Bostock that went to a tribunal, didn't he? Yeah, and he Bostock, like, yeah, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. And he used to say, you know, he should have been worth X amount, and these clubs, big clubs, come take him. It's exactly the same situation, but in, down where we are, there's no compensation. <sighs> they just get taken. See you later. Off. Oh, that's it. That's unbelievable. It's harsh, isn't it? It's very hard. And you and, and we, in the same way as obviously the the, the pro academies and stuff, we we spend those, those that time with those players, um, bringing them through to the system through the system into under eighteens and then in in and around those sort of first team non league levels. And um, you know, we get no. <laughs> that's it. There's no competition. Uh, compensation at all and oh, then you have a double it. knock effect because like let's say we were going back to the guy who's knocking him in for fun or the midfield general or, or whatever he might be it's not just the fact you lose that which weakens you in the league you can't then just go out and say right we've got some money let's let's fill the hole you can't you've lost the goals or you've lost that and if you're battling for promotion like we said before like to, to go from step four to three or three to two that starts to give you some financial reward because you're now moving up the pyramid but that's taken away from you you can't just go well there's half a million quid let's go and buy two players it does it, yeah. you're doubly yeah, screwed no. yeah absolutely yeah there's no two ways about it that's it and it happens it, it happens a lot I think there was a team that was in our league last year that won the league and went up and they did it by um, the players coming up together and being a very tight knit so that mm. they you know, if a, an, another club came in for them, uh, maybe a, a club hire or whatever, and they said, oh, you know, you're on 50 quid a week, we'll give you 100 quid a week. Because they, were, they in particular, were, you know, they, they had good jobs, for example, and the money wasn't that important to them. Um, they, were, they were like, no, we stuck together. Um, uh, London Lions, that we stuck together. And the, the players and the manager said they, they just want to play with each other. They just love playing with each other. And they, you know, they a great team and, and played really some good football and they, they ended up winning the league but they never lost any of their players because whenever someone came in from the players didn't want to leave they just they wanted to stay but you don't get that so rare because like I say a player now you know if they're getting 20, 30 pound a week or expenses being paid and someone from a league above or two leagues above goes well we'll give you 50 quid a week and your expenses or 100 pound a week or 75 pound a week or whatever it may be well I, our experiences as players they go, they jump for that away. It's also, I think, it's uh, being, it's, it's that whole, I'm being paid to play football. Do you know what I mean? And you I can't, do. yeah, you can't sort of take that away from them. You know what I mean? You can't begrudge them from, from, from wanting to, you know, I, I never got paid when we was down at this, at this level. We never got paid at five or six. It was just <laughs> starting to come in <laughs> as I, as I sort of stopped with my own personal issues and injuries and things like that. But, do you see what I mean? It's like, you know, it's a thing for them. I'm getting paid to play football. You know, it might be £20 a week, but you are. I suppose the other thing is, like, you see Vardy or whoever it is that we, we see as the poster boy. You know, that, 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 I guess you call it, that success story. If you start moving up and get paid, it puts you in that shop window. Maybe you can secure your move as well. That kind of thing. Um, yeah, it depends on the... the the level, I suppose. When you get into three and four and three and up to two, that that's when those areas. I mean, um, I know there was a player for, that left um, Ragnarok, who we, we were linked with um, at step three and moved to the national league. Wow. Um, that's a big yeah. jump in itself. Well, and he he's doing fantastic. He had the opportunity to do that, but again, was very loyal to the club. 
came through again from step five, and as the as the the, the club went up the leagues, mm. um, was very loyal to the club, and it wasn't just because he was, and he had a he got a fantastic job he, he, himself. It's it, it was not solely about money. It was an opportunity that enabled him to keep his job because at that level, a lot of them are pro, and then would require them to leave their main jobs and and, and go full time. So it was a it was a no brainer for that for that particular player, and he's he's doing fantastic, you know. And think about levels; it it's not, the levels aren't that great between those between those um, those leagues. They're they're, they're not. They're, you're obviously going to get between down the bottom teams and things like that, but they're not. The, the difference is not amazingly like you would you you would think it was a, a, a really big difference, but it actually isn't. In the scenario we were talking about before, where you had up to eight players leave. How do you replace those? I mean, you can't just go to the youth system or the reserves and say, can you take the step up? How do you, do you, can you put an ad out there for anyone local who's semi-decent at football? Or how do you go about finding and bringing somebody in ready-made for the first team? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's obviously connections that you've got in the game with other other coaches and, and other teams and things like that. You can do. Ourselves, we use the academy. We actually did do that, and again, they're, they're doing fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. We give, give them that chance, and they're they're doing they're doing really well. And we're still we're still flying high and doing really well. Um, you still need a blend, though, a, a bit more of an experience. How many of those experienced players you need depends on on the on the on the level of the players that you've got, how well they're doing. So we, we there is, but there is means of of, of going in. It's usually it is who you know. Um, you know, with everybody, <laughs> player to player, yeah, exactly, player to player, or another player, or or a, another coach, you know, or someone else, or you know, that's mainly how most teams get um, get unless you're doing really well and teams are looking at uh, players are looking at you from other clubs and they're going, well, no, I want a bit of that. They're doing really well. We played them and they play great football. I'd love to play for them. It must be a big that. thing for a player because, like you said, you're not getting paid. You've got a main job. So to move from somebody, you know, Dover Athletic or someone like that, Maidstone United, to come to Sandhurst Town, that's a big uproot because you've got to find yourself a main job or have the flexibility to be able to do that. It's not just get paid from there and, and go to there in like the mm. professional element. So that must make it slightly more difficult just to be able to attract players as well. Oh, yeah, it is, especially at our level as well, because you're not, you're looking at getting. Because obviously they just don't earn earn enough money, you know. Mm. It's such a, to be be paying it. It's it, the the filter down and how it's happened. You know, you're having to pay out more and more and more um, for players, uh, and it's yeah, it's it's crazy. Some, some you know some some of the sums I've heard at players and it's at, oh, earning hundred pound, two hundred pound. You think oh, you think. Our level is it's ridiculous. How the clubs can, you know, and then they, they get these guys that come in, the businessmen that come in and support the clubs and things like that. How a lot of these clubs get away with doing it. But, like I say, for, the, for your average, they can't afford to do that. It's, it's funny because it's exactly the same at every level. If you've got a benefactor who backs you, who you yeah. where you can afford to buy that, ec- well, buy your way out of the league, basically. Yeah. yeah. It is. I mean, We've we've we're pretty proud of uh, my me and my coaching staff and proud of what we have done and the way we have done it this season with um, not relying on money. Let's say um, to actually out on you know we've worked really hard with with good players and also we coach them really well. It, in our opinion, we 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 do really well with them and that that's that's how. That's how we. I would like to do it. I, I don't want to like to rely on money. I mean, if if it's there, fantastic. But you know, do it without. I think that's that's the ultimate test, isn't it? Really. No, definitely. That's that's how you prove your metal as a coach. You're taking what you've got and improving it. That's the the barometer, really. You you sort of touched on it earlier about your own experiences in football injuries and, and where you got up to in the non-league. So what was your playing career like prior to becoming a coach? Uh, yeah, it was sort of, you know, the Sunday leagues under, I you know, started under six, 
under seven as you do go up through through the through the age groups and um played i played pretty high level i never played i never got, i never did one of the um pro clubs or uh, as it used to be uh, and played for a, a pro club or a trials or anything like that at, at pro clubs but um always played pretty high in the, in the top league of the sunday league uh, which used to be the West Surrey Boys League when I was when I was younger. Um, you know, played in teams that won leagues and cups and county cups and things like that. Um, and then went on sort of under when they, when that finishes, not usually around us sixteens youth level into under eighteens. Uh, and I went to uh, Westfield, um, who were in step five and their reserve team step six. Now the equivalent back then it would have been something else. Because the, the the pyramids changes every few years, they they are melting. The names, they, yeah. yeah, the yeah. names change, but it, it's the level. It, it's the same, but they just change the name and stuff like that. I mean, it never used to be step; it used to be something else. But I, I, I can't remember. Um, what's now? <laughs> um, but then, uh, like I say, I only then I only played. So I did under 18s and I played with them reserve and first team and a bit first team and then the reserves and and, and I played for about. Uh, a year and a half, I think, second season within that. I had so many ankle injuries. Um, I had to stop. I just it just kept, I come back for a game or two games and then, and then I was out again because my ankle or my other ankle went. It was built up from, I was uh, a kid, I used to have a lot of injuries and stuff like that. And even with my back and things like that as a, as a kid. Um, so I ended up, I, I stopped and then um, I, I just, sort of stopped playing. And then I played Sunday League with my mates and a pub, you know, like you do. <laughs> and uh, did a bit of that for a couple of years and then had my son. And then when he was five, six, he started playing football and then the coaches wanted a, wanted coaches. So I was just like, oh, I'm not in. I'll, I'll, I'll love me football. Um, and just started coaching from there and then went up under sixes or whatever it was, coached all the way up to under 16s. Um my assistant who helped me the last, so we would ever from under fourteens, under thirteens. He's still with me now and we moved up through under sixteens, under eighteens at Nap Hill and under under twenty threes we did there and then we moved to Sandhurst and the, we helped the guy um that we was with before, manager there. Um and now I've I've taken over this season with uh, the guy who's helping me out, who's who's pretty much been with me. All the way, actually. To be fair, couldn't do it without him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like your um, your Peter Taylor to the Brian Clough kind of thing. Yeah, that's Dave, what it is. Yeah, yeah, Dave, David McGill. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. It, well, the pair of us, we we complement each other great. He 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 is he's got his own good football knowledge. <clears throat> I tend to be more better with the football side. He's uh, an older head with with management and things like that. Lots of management experience, being a senior management in his job and stuff like that. Um. Bit younger and uh, learning, learning more of that, and how to speak to people and manage people better. So we're a great combination, yeah, and it works really well. And how's your season going? Where are you in the table at the moment? So we're currently we were second, but after the game the other day, um, uh, because some of the teams have got three G pitch, so they're still playing. We haven't played for three weeks, so we're about four or five games behind nearly everybody in around us. So we're third position at the moment. Um. We've played 17, we've lost three and won uh, fifth, uh, 14. Uh, we've scored about 70-odd goals. We've got a ridiculous uh, goals for ratio. We, we haven't lost a game at home. We, we, we're just doing really well. The, the, the boys have been absolutely fantastic. They've, they've been great. So and formally, we important. need to issue a hands-off plea to any of the bigger clubs. Like, no, what, at least not until the end of the season. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've had enough of players being tempted and tried to take away. We've had to bat off teams and we've had players leave. And especially after that first eight games when, you know, half the team went and we had to rebuild it again and, and continue. And we managed to do that. And we've helped from, from who, who helped us out really a, a, a lot from there. It's fantastic. Um, and then we're, we're just uh, continuing to, to build from there as well. But uh, again, Using academy players, it's difficult, you know, half terms and stuff. There's a, there's a break coming up. Some of the lads are going to America. 
and they're they're playing out there, which is absolutely fantastic. Well, like in the soccer camps, that kind of thing. Is that what they're? Well, they're gonna they're taking a sort of team out. They're gonna play a few (laughs) games and train and things like that. It's absolutely fantastic, great idea. But obviously for us, (laughs) it leaves us a few players short, so we have to manage that and try and you know bring in maybe a couple of players and do that at at the moment now. So, what would um, promotion look like then? If if you went on a run, if you won your games in hand and you got into the top first or two places get into the automatics and you got to that next step what would that look like in terms of the running of the club or the the level of organization is it similar or do you have to start to up your game a little bit because you've now gone up the the tree a bit yeah we would do ordinarily if you're a, if you're a club that has been used to these areas and maybe your ground needs adjusting and you need you know um barriers and barriers is it silly things maybe a, a a stand or a certain amount of seat, you know, it's it's really daft uh, things that you these things have to go up to the next level. We're fortunate, obviously, because we we um, are linked with Bracknell, so um, we ground share. So the the ground is is you know doable to go up go up the leagues as as, as high as 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 you want. And obviously, as Bracknell go up, they'll they'll develop as they as and when they need to to grow and. Um, yeah, and it, we're sort of obviously we, we see the benefits of that from from our side because the club at Sandhurst doesn't doesn't have to. That's all done for us. Oh, that's club uh, being together. <clears throat> see that that's that's pretty good because you don't consider those kind of health and safety things or requirements on the ground as you go up because you do hear about stories of clubs being stuck where they might win a league but they can't progress because of yep. stupid things. Oh yeah. A lot. It happens both. Not only that, the finance. I mean, we, the club we was at before, they they it was close for them getting up, but they were worried. They were like bloody hell, we go up <laughs> finance and cost and things like that. The extra, you know, of the, of the next league you go from going, and, and that's what I say. Five to four is a, is quite a big jump. From six to five is is not so much, but five to four is a big one, and then again four to three, another big jump. So that's where you you, you sort of levels and where those things up and really, really important to, to club finances and things like that. And that's really where you need those businessmen like you were talking about before to back the club to support that growth. Because you're when you get to that step three, like you said, you're almost at the national levels, you know, national south, national north, but you're you're touching <laughs> on that on that. That that's as big a jump as you can probably imagine. You go from all those regional areas <laughs> up, up, up. It's um Obviously, there's a couple, yeah, of, a couple of promotions first before you have to worry about that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But that, it, it's uh, it is a commitment in around the club, in the club, or to, to the players. Um, the game times, the travelling, oh, the travelling just as, <clears> as you do out, the travelling just go high and high and high. I mean, then you've got to be you're looking at your job. I mean. Mm-hmm. The, does it does that facilitate you being able to do these kind of things? I mean, you know. We, with your environment, can you, can you get time off? Easy? Do you run your own business? Is it easier? You know, all of those kind of things. So, so it's a, it is a big commitment, and the higher you go, the, the, the more the more commitment that there is. So, yeah. In terms of general crowd at home, what sort of numbers would you typically expect cheering you on? So we would get. I think the highest we've had is near a near a hundred people. We usually get around the. We're really trying to promote that and trying to push that so that we're we're getting more more people in. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's like I think six quid uh, entry for an adult and you know for uh, kids under of a certain age. So, um, and you you said the majority of the tickets are sold at the door, basically. Yeah, so just on turn the, up on the night, turn up uh, and get yes. your ticket. And be part yeah, of the Bob local Meadow. community supporting your local team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so Bot Meadow, Sanders uh, Town, um, Bracknell Town, um, and up on the gate, and um, yeah, you can um, buy on the, on the door for Bracknell. They have a website that you can go to that that you can buy ticket uh, in advance um, on, on the website Bracknell FC. Uh, website that you can you can go to, and then let's say Sanders, we, we we as is turn up on the day. I'll include the website and the club has a Twitter page as well. I'll include those as well when this goes live so that the anyone in the area who wants to come and support their local non-league team, 
I mean, I've been to places like uh, Hampton and Richmond. Um, I went to Hayes, um, even Wokingham Town back in the day. Non-league is like, it's, it's unlike any other football experience. It's, it's, it's brilliant. And um, it's not just the fact you get some of the best videos in the world when uh, it's a bit below your level, when players go for the ball and miss it. It's, you, you, get a, you get like a spirit in the ground that you don't get anywhere else. It's, it's, it's kind of weird to describe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We we had a, last year we had a period of uh, one of the lads, uh, one of our players had a, a group of lads that came with us, and, you know, well, I don't know, about 10, 12 of them. And they made so much noise. It was fantastic. <laughs> it was like having it was like having fans. The players would celebrate and jump in the crowd with them. And fanta- oh, it was fantastic. Yeah, it's like having your own Barmy Army. That was what it was. Yeah, the exactly. Army. And they're singing and things like that. It was, it was, it was amazing. But let's say we, we are always trying to look for exactly local. Come around, come and come and watch, come support your local club. You, you know, the, the level and the football, it's surprising. It is a lot better than what you would think. I can I can vouch for that. I remember being given a few licks on the football pitch where you get people like Daggett and Redbridge or Kidderminster or people like that would send a team down and they'd play you off the pitch. Like their touch, their movement off the ball, even their general strength, they were just like you go, you consider yourself pretty good and they just come along and they wipe the floor and you think, and they, and they were only, uh, what would they have been? They would have been what you would call step two. They would have been national south probably they were they were they were beasts even at that level yeah 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 for sure i mean we played a we played a step to the uh, step two side i think this year in a cup Arts cup and uh hungerford it might even be free now no, they are two because yeah Bracken, um and we played them in a cup and uh we lost seven two in the end <sighs> they, they, it was but it was two one at half time, and and we, bear in mind we used that as well to play some academy mm. players that hadn't actually been playing. So we were, you know, we weren't even full strength, and we were like at half time, we're like, wow, <laughs> we're gonna, we're doing right here. And then uh, they made a couple of changes, brought some other big guns yeah. on, and um, level, you know, things like set pieces and things like that. They were amazing, absolutely amazing. Like, their organisation and things mm. like that, and it, you know, they scored about. Pieces and just like well, you know that that's that that is where the difference in levels. Is. That's where they get that time on the train. No, for sure. Yeah. I yeah. will. Um, I'll definitely include all of the handles that I can and website links when this goes live to really try and push um, anyone in the local community to come and support the club. But in the meantime, I appreciate you taking time out of your day um, to speak to me. It is much appreciated. Yeah, no problem at all. Thanks very much for having me on. Nice one, Gareth. Take care. Yeah. And to everyone who's much. watching, um, yeah, stay tuned and watch out for our next episode. 